the only good sale is one that leads to the next sale. That's it. That is, that is it. The biggest expense you have in your life as a salesperson, coach, entrepreneur, business owner is your lack of knowledge. Too many salespeople view customers as if they're bowling pins. And, and the whole idea is just to knock them down. Preceding COVID, we'd had 10 years of economic expansion. So life became pretty good. Salespeople yeah. became pretty lazy. We become greater because of the people we get to associate with and we get to learn from. So whatever you're doing right now, I want you to stop and think about this question I'm going to ask you. Really think about it deeply. So whether you're driving down the road to a sales appointment, whether you're about to pick up your phone in office to call a prospect, whether you're in the gym thinking about your day and who you have to call on, uh, or let's say that you're walking into a board meeting here in a minute to finalize the deal. Heck, in our time, maybe you're on a Zoom meeting finalizing that deal. I want you to think about what does it actually take? Like, what does it seriously take to be a top 1% salesperson in your industry? Here's what I'm talking about. The salesperson who makes all of the money, who gets any promotion they want. In fact, they turn down promotions they don't like, and they've got the respect of everyone in their company, the management, the ownership, everybody respects them. Well, my next guest is gonna answer that question for you. And let me give you a small taste of his background. My next guest sales motto is sales is not a job. Sales is this man's life and helping others achieve their full potential is his number one mission. Okay. He's recognized as one of the top 50 most influential sales and marketing leaders in the world. We're going to talk about that in a second. He's the author of three best-selling books, High Profit Prospecting and High Profit Selling. And his newest, which we're going to really dive into, a Mind for Sales, on its first day of release, Zoom to number one in the bestseller ranks for status on Amazon. Well done. We're going to talk about it. He never intended to work in the sales industry. When his last name on your birth certificate is Hunter, you have the sales DNA in your destiny. Okay, his journey in sales included multiple sales and leadership roles with three Fortune 500 companies. He specializes now in business development, guiding organizations to find and retain high-quality prospects, However, according to him, success in sales really boils down to creating relationships. I agree. His passion for helping, training, and leading others has given him an opportunity to travel all over the globe. He's known for his engaging style that captivates audiences, and he shared the stage with some of the biggest people in the world. Seth Godin, Tony Robbins, Magic Johnson, Adriana Huffington. Well done. He always says the best sale he's ever made was when he proposed to his wife. 39 years later, he and his wife have two married children, four grandchildren, and he likes to say that one sale that he has kept on going. A lifetime customer, your wife is. Please help welcome to the show, the sales hunter himself, Mark Hunter. Mark, how are you? Hey, thanks for having me on. And correction, it has now been 40 years and we have a fifth grandchild on the way. It just I, you know, keeps on giving. I cannot giving. keep up with you. All right, so I'm excited <laughs> to have you here, Mr. Nebraska himself. So I love talking to sales professionals, sales trainers who understand human behavior, who understand how to train salespeople to use techniques and principles that work with human behavior rather than that work against human behavior. So important. So let's do this. I wanna dive right into your story and really give our listeners, let's say, a feel for your background and how you've arrived at this point where you're known as one of the elite authorities on sales. Can you tell us a little bit more about your background and how this started for you? Like, where did you learn all these skills? You're listening to the Mindy 95 KQZ Radio 719. See, I wanted to be a disc jockey. When I was in a good radio voice. I love uh, When I was in college, I was a disc jockey. Yeah. Um, in fact, you know, now you, you can't tell your parents you're using their, their money to go to college to be a district. That, that just does So I, I was faking it as, at, with a degree in marketing. Right. Um, it was really working out good because I was just about ready to graduate. Sure. And the problem was um, my career changed at the last moment thanks to the police department. Really? Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, well, <laughs> um, I became quite 
personally acquainted with the police department uh, through a number of speeding tickets. <laughs> nobody was hurt. Nobody was harmed. But when you're in college, you know, you're not responsible for your actions. You know, sure. you're, you're just not. So I, I just totally ignored. Now, I paid the tickets. But about a few months after I got out of college, I got this notice that I could no longer afford car insurance with the marketing job I had. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, this, is, this is such deep research. So I, I um, had to find a job that supplied me with a car. That yeah. is actually what put me into sales. I got a sales job that supplied you me had with no a car. I had no choice. I had no choice. I mean, I had no choice. I mean, this is, I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Oh. Uh, if, 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 if being a disc jockey had supplied me with a car, I would yeah. have been a disc jockey. But yeah, you know, anyway, and, and I was so good at that first job, I got fired from it. <laughs> so anyway, so I, but it's okay. I got a second job right away. Yeah. I was so good at that job, I got fired from it too. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. So isn't it great that you're, you're, you, your audience is listening to a person who, A, wanted to be a disc jockey, two, couldn't figure out what he wanted to do in life, three, got fired from his first two sales jobs. Oh, man, are we in trouble. So you're suggesting that sales is something that can be learned, not something that you're born with. Believe me, I had to learn it. I learned it. See, this is what, you know what it comes down to? Sure. Sales is not rocket science, people, please. And yes, with the last name of Hunter, you're, and that is my real last name. You know, I'm known as the sales hunter. Don't go stealing that. It's, it's trademarked. It's my it. name. Don't, don't go stealing it. Um, it. It's not something you're born with. And because I got, like I said, I got fired from my first two sales jobs. And I talk a lot about it in my book, A Mind for Sales. Yeah. Uh, because you do have to develop a mind. Now, I, I, in college, I made the upper half of my class possible. Right. So that means there was a lot of void space in my life. You're, you're, you're thinking about that, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> you're in trouble with where this whole podcast episode <laughs> is going. I had to learn it. And what it comes down to is it is people. Yeah. It's having a conversation. Yeah. And it's when you take conversation, uh, something yes. you learn. skilled conversations are learned. It's of course so learning the right questions at the right time and learning how to listen to what they mean, not just what they say is a skill set you have to learn. You're not born with that. You're not born with it. And it takes years. It takes a long time craft. But when you take the time to listen and truly, and, and like you said, in my introduction, I don't believe sales is a job or profession. It is a lifestyle. Yeah. It's because my, my goal is to help you see and achieve what you didn't think was possible. Yeah. I totally, I totally agree with that. Now, yeah. I was on your website earlier, okay? I want to talk about this book you have, the new book, A Mind for Sales, Daily Habits, Practical Strategies for Sales Success. Who did you write this book for specifically? And tell us what was, a, what was behind writing it. Well, what was, behind, what was behind the book was my first book was High Profit Selling, which was about how to maximize price, how to close the deal without a discount. Right. I well, when I wrote that book, it, very, it became very obvious that you are never going to be able to close a deal full price unless you have the right customer, the right prospect. Yeah. So that's what led me to write High Profit Prospecting. Mm. Problem is, nobody wakes up in the morning and says, oh, man, I want to prospect. This is so much fun. This is so, you know, it's painful. Sure. And I actually like it. I like prospecting. Well, it's easy once you have the right skills and bingo. And, and once you have the phone, right you know, mind, it's yeah, once they answer the phone. If you, I mean, you throw out all the motivation in the world. If they answer the phone and you don't know what to say, or more importantly, ask that causes them to want to engage, slap in your face every call. It, it, it's 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 purely about having a conversation. You know, last time, and I, I don't know, I, I go out on the internet every day and I have yet to see a headline that says salesperson was mauled, murdered, shot, maimed because of making a prospecting call. Sure. I have yet to see that happen. Very good point. So let's break this down, okay? Um, just the start of it. And I asked this question to a lot of trainers we have in here. What specific steps did you take? So you got fired from these first two jobs and you're like, okay, there's something I don't know that I need to know. What, did you, what steps did you take at that point to be like, okay, I need to learn some skills to be successful? Well, the lesson I had to learn was customers are not bowling pins. Right. <laughs> yeah, okay, you're going, where the heck is this going? Here's the whole thing. Too many salespeople view customers as if they're bowling pins. And, yeah. and the whole idea is just to knock them down yeah. and move on to the next set of pins. 
just knock them down, move on. What you have to realize is that customers are human beings yeah. and they have some sort of a, uh, a need. Now, the problem is customers don't know what they don't know. Yeah. So it was my, my third job, my mm -hmm. third sales job, third yeah. company car. And I really thought I was going to get fired. And uh, I was sat down. I was told, I said, you really don't understand what your customers are. You, you don't understand what your customers are saying. You're not listening to them. Well, and you're right. I wasn't. Techniques were taught. Most sales training out there still to this day, it's embarrassing. It's basically taught, teaching you. It's like you against the customer. Like selling is adversarial. Selling is collaborative, right? It's you working with the customer. Like you said, most prospects when you first talk to them don't even know they have problems, right? So you have to be what we call problem finders and problem solvers, where you're asking the right questions in that conversations that allow them to, to trigger and think about problems that they didn't even know they had. Or maybe they knew they had a problem, but they didn't know how bad it was or the consequences if they don't do anything. And that puts you in a position of authority, like the trusted authority. <sighs> It changes it dramatically. I, I was doing a coaching call this morning with some salespeople and they're charged with making outbound sales calls. Yeah. Uh, not, not, not necessarily. They're not cold calls. These are, these are warm calls. Sure. And it was, and I was listening to some of their audios uh, beforehand. Oh, they were pathetic. They were bad. And I got on and I was doing some role play with them. Yeah. And I said, here's the whole key thing. Yeah. All I need is one question. All I need is one question to engage you. And with whatever it is that you share with me, whatever it is, I'm going to come back and ask you a follow-up question on it. Yeah. Now think about this. Mm -hmm. If you get asked a follow-up question on something you just shared, it's like, wow, this guy's actually listening. Yeah. She's yeah. actually listening. He, yeah, he cares. Yeah. And, and it's amazing mm -hmm. how the tone of the conversation changes. Yeah. And all I'm doing is, as I say in sales, yeah. my objective is to earn the right, the privilege, honor, and respect yeah. To be able to come back and talk to you again. Yeah. Bingo. Well, it's how they view you. It, it's it, it, when you're, when you're asking the right questions at the right time in the conversation that triggers them human psychology to want to engage with you, to become curious about whether or not you can help them. They treat you as more of the trusted authority or the advisor. Whereas most salespeople, like you said, just bowl them down like pins. It's adversarial. And so they push those people off to the side and they treat them like just another salesperson trying to stuff their solution down their throat and they reject them and get rid of them quickly, even if they have problems. And here's my next question. There's so many sales books out there, so much literature. I mean, I've, I've read hundreds of, of sales books. There's so many books out there on selling, but yet people struggle so much in selling. Why do you think that is? Because they don't really want to take to heart. Here, here's what most salespeople are waking up in the morning and they think for some reason there's some pixie dust that's going to just fall on them and it's just going to poof. Sure. And suddenly they're going to be awesome salespeople. It's yeah. not the case. I agree. You, you, you really have to take a step back yeah. and just take the time to listen to what the other person's saying. And what I want, what I want to do with every conversation I have with anybody, mm. I want to go three levels deep. Well, let me run down this path for a second. I want to go three levels deep. And I don't care where I am, who I'm selling to, what conversation is. I'm going to ask you a question. You're going to share with me something. That's great. I'm going to ask you a follow-up question on that. Yeah. You're going to come back and share with me something. Then I'm going to ask you another question. See, I want to get three levels deep. Yeah. And when I do that, suddenly you're, you're really paying attention to me. You're, you're connecting with me. Well, you're peeling the layers off the onion, right? Bingo. Average salespeople, most salespeople only know how to ask a few surface level questions. You know, I, I call that consultative selling. Came out in the 80s and 90s. You ask a couple of logical based questions to find out their needs. Like, oh, Mr. Prospect, what, uh, what are two problems that keep you awake at night? Boring, right? Everybody asks those questions. They've been asked for 30, 40 years. And they don't, and they, they give you a logical based answer that's just really the surface of what's really going on. You hit it on the head. You have to ask, you call them follow up questions. I call them like probing or clarifying questions to really find out what's behind that problem. Like, what is the root cause of their problem? And how is the problem affecting them even down to their emotions, their feeling side? And that's where you peel the layers off and people engage with you. You said something there, magical emotion. You yeah. know, people say, well, I'm in B2B sales, so emotion doesn't play. Oh, liar, liar, what? pants on fire. Oh. Believe me. Emotion yeah. plays in everything. You see, I have to always make sure 
that I'm connecting with you from an emotional standpoint. And right now, you know, we're recording this during this COVID period. And I have no yeah. idea how long this is going to last, but sure. boy, empathy, yeah. empathy. Yeah. Wow. Goes off the chart. If you're not taking the time to listen and to understand. hundred percent. Now let's talk about, let's talk about the pandemic. What's changed in sales since the start of, I mean, selling has been changing rapidly the last several years, but since the pandemic happened, like it's like sped, it's warp speed, like light speed. Your thoughts, what's changed with sales since the start of the pandemic? You know, what's really funny. Nothing has really changed. Hmm. It's just that all these, these bad habits have now been exposed. See the bad habits were preceding COVID. We'd had 10 years of economic expansion. So life became pretty good. Salespeople yeah. became pretty lazy. Yeah. See, so what, what happened was we were no longer creating incremental value. Mm. We were fulfilling customer requests. Mm. So now we, now we have to say, how do we create incremental opportunity? That's really what sales is. Customer service is about fulfilling existing mm, need. Yeah. Sales is about creating incremental opportunity. So, yeah. okay. So that's what we really got to get dialed in on. But what it takes is it takes a greater ability for us to listen and to understand. Now, yeah. here's the whole thing. There's a tremendous amount of business to be had out there. When people sit there and say, eh, there's people no have business. problems. And sometimes oh, now they have even man. more problems that they need to be solved. There's more problems. Yeah. And the timetable, you know, speed sells. Yeah. Now, speed also kills. I get it. But speed yeah. spells. Yeah. I mean, you have to be able to connect faster. I, I, I tell people from a prospecting standpoint, yeah. I'm doubling down on the number of times I'm reaching out to you yeah. and I'm cutting that time period in half. Yeah. I, I, I think you said something just a second ago that is so important for everybody listening to understand that it is easy to sell in times of economic expansion, right? So in economic expansion, that especially the last five, six years, really been going last, I would say four or five years going out the window, right? Before everything happened. But in times of economic contraction, which we're experiencing now, just the startup, we don't even really know where it's gonna go. Nobody knows, no, no economy's ever been shut down from a virus, right? This has just never happened. We don't know what's gonna happen, okay? But you said something that's so important. In times of economic contraction, every shortcoming that you, the salesperson has, is only going to be magnified and will result for lost sales for you and your company. So right now, you have to dig deep and really learn the right skills if you want to be successful right now and really just soar when everything comes back up. So true. Yeah, I, I had a situation where a guy told me, he says, oh yeah, well, inbound leads that come in off of our website, we, we generally able to follow up with them in about 24 to 72 hours. Yeah. And I about croaked. 72 hours? That's a lot. Yes. Yeah. I said, hey, wait a minute. Wait, there's an inbound inquiry. That customer's got an itch. That means it's got to be scratched now. They're if you wait for their problem right now. Right, 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 right. right. If, if you wait for 72 hours to scratch them, you're stalking them. Um, yeah. You, you have got to be on them instantly. Oh, oh, but he said, yeah, but yeah, but we've always found that is a little bit creepy. Get over it. No. If, if you don't satisfy the customer now, they're, they're moving on. Customers raising their hand, they, saying, <sighs> help. I have a problem if they're an inbound lead. I mean, that's what they're doing. They're raising their hand saying, can you help me? Uh, and 72 hours is crazy. Crazy. Lots but, of but things can change in 72 hours. I had a situation. This is, this is bizarre. Company I'm doing some work with. Yeah. And I do work with the VP of sales. Great. I know they're going through some, they're in a tough industry. Yeah. And the HR person had been sending me some, some notes and, and uh, HR person responded to me yesterday saying, oh, yesterday was their last day with the company. They've been let go. Yeah. Laid off. So where do you start now? Yeah. 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 Now, now fortunately, I mean, I, I'm solid with the VP of sales and, yeah. you, know, you know, we're good. But see, you, you got, you, you have to run with it. Yeah. You do. I agree. I want, to, let's, I want to dive into this book. So you talk about three of your greatest assets. You talk about our time, our mind our network. Can you give us more context behind what that means? Yeah. Here's your objective. Every day, I want you to A, protect your time. Mm. I want you to B, grow your mind. Yeah. And C, I want you to nurture your network. Now let's come back and unpack that. Let's go back through that. Yeah. The, mo the most valuable asset you have is not your customers. It's not what you sell. Sorry. It's your time. Yeah. It's your time. I was on the phone the other day with a gentleman and, I was, and he was complaining because it, it may take him 30 minutes to craft a perfect email. 
I yeah. said, think about that. If you could do that in five minutes, you have 25 more minutes. You know, I mean, yeah. you, your time is your most valuable. So you have to do everything possible. So this means what you want to do is you want to be able to qualify your prospects because I don't want 10,000. I don't want 10,000 leads, 10,000 prospects. Yeah. I want fewer prospects I can spend more time with. That's yeah. how I uncover bigger need. Okay. Perfect. So that, that's this whole time thing. And again, I got a couple of chapters in there as to little tips and so forth as to how to maximize your time. B, grow your mind. Every day, I want you to ask yourself at the, end, at the end of the day, what did I learn? What did I learn today? And how am I going to use it tomorrow? Yeah. You have to be, knowledge has compounded interest. Yeah. It, 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 it is amazing. It's so true. So every day, the, the top salespeople invest in themselves. You know, you know, one question a lot of companies are asking now, okay? A lot of companies, you'd be surprised what they're doing. So they're asking because they're trying to find the very best salespeople they can. So they are a lot of companies literally asking salespeople, okay, how much sales training did you go through in the last year? And if they say, if they, if, if they ask them, they're going to ask them like, how much sales training did you buy last year? How much did you invest in yourself? in sales training, if that salesperson says, I didn't buy anything, but my company bought me sales training, they go to the bottom of the stack. The salespeople that say, oh, I spent X amount of dollars last year on sales training besides what my company did, that tells them that that person is dedicated to the craft and is going outside. He's like the Michael Jordan that stays extra to shoot free throws to be the best. They're not just relying on the company because maybe the company doesn't give you the right training. Uh, maybe they don't give you any training at all. You have to go outside of that and invest in yourself if you want to get the best sales positions. The example I like to use is this. Does your company buy the vitamins that you take? Does your company pay for your health club membership? Right. Eh, some companies may do. But think yeah. about that. You do both of those to invest in yourself. Yeah. 100%. Why would you not choose to invest in knowledge in yourself? This yeah. is what drives yeah. me crazy. So you have to grow your network. Now, I, I didn't talk about nurture your network because that's the third thing. Now, you notice I didn't say use your network. No, yeah. no. I said nurture your network. Nurture your network. I my like big difference here. I want my network to grow. You know, we become the sum of the five people we associate with the most. Oh. Now, I didn't say that. Um, I Jim, know you're Jim talking Rohn. about I, yeah, I believe Jim yeah. Rohn used yeah. that line initially. Um, but what I want to do is I want to associate, and I break down the book, three different levels yeah. of networks that you want to have. But here's the whole thing. Your net worth is the sum of your network. I get all that sort of stuff, but it's amazing. Now, your network has long-term play to you, long-term benefits. Yeah. Don't look to your network to say, oh, this is going to fill my pipeline tomorrow. No, it's not going to. Yeah but it's going to create long-term differences in yeah. you from a knowledge, yeah. from connections, from business, it, a whole host of things. Mm. So I, those are your three most valuable assets. Yeah. And you, you said something that is so important, you know, a good mentor of mine, I, I think you know him too. His motto is, is training something that you did or is training something that you do? It's something you do if you want to be a top salesperson. I mean, it's your income. Your livelihood for your family depends on your knowledge. The biggest expense you have in your life as a salesperson, coach, entrepreneur, business owner is your lack of knowledge. That is your biggest expense you have in life. It's not your taxes. It's not your house payment. It's not your kids. Your biggest expense in life is your lack of knowledge of having the right skills to be able to sell anything you want and really go anywhere you want. It's your lack of knowledge. You have yeah. to gain that knowledge and yeah. then apply it. Yeah. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about section two of your book, okay? You say something very interesting. You say that sales is not a solo activity. It's a team sport. What did you mean by that? Well, there, there's several different ways with which you can look at team sport. First of all, I want to, A, have a network that's going to lift me up and I can lift them up. So that's part of your team. In other words, I have people that I communicate with on a daily basis and we, we help motivate, we help lift each other up. Team sport also is because I can't always be the subject matter expert. So there are going to be other people that I'm going to bring in on this call. I'm going to connect with. Hey, you're having this challenge. You know what? I, I'm going to connect you with this person. Yeah. You see, what I want to do mm. is I always want to be part of a team. Go, go back and and I know people can say LeBron James is the greatest basketball player. I still think Michael Jordan. I, I'm a Michael Jordan. Uh, thank you. Okay. You and I are tracking. You, you probably have a 23 jersey and a 45 we jersey. Gotta, we got to wait until the end of LeBron's career to say 
You got to wait till right. everybody's career's over right. before you say it was the best. MJ, in my mind, yeah. Right. But if you stop and think about it, what made MJ great? Yeah. It was the circle of people he was around. Yeah. You see. Mm. And this is the key thing. We become greater because of the people we get to associate with and we get to learn from. Now, Michael Jordan, I mean, Scottie Pippen, I mean, all of, of, of the cast yeah. helped him succeed. Yeah. This is what you want to look at. Never, when you look at sales as a, as a solo activity, yeah. it is amazing how you stop listening. Mm. It is amazing how your attitude changes. It is amazing how you begin to believe it is you against them. No, adversarial. it's, it's a team not. sport. It's a team sport. I agree. Now, you suggest in your book as well that sales is not a numbers game. I agree with you, but it's more of a quality game. Expand on that a little bit. Well, see, a lot of people say, oh, if I just make enough calls, if I just make enough calls, if I just make enough calls, I just, I just keep going, keep going. Keep... Okay. Uh, hitting your head against the wall is not going to cause that wall to collapse. It's just going to give you a very sore head. Okay. Now, well, now, like Brian Tracy says, every blind squirrel eventually finds a nut. That's, right, that's exactly. what they think for some reason. I don't know. It, it just yeah, yeah. Now I get it that I got to reach. I, I got it that I, I can't make one call and it, life yeah. is going to be you know no. Yeah. But what I say is this: don't go chasing dead horses. I, this is where I say you got to know what you, know know the outcome you create mm. and who is going to benefit most from that. Yeah. And zero in on that and look at the keywords on the bottle of shampoo in your shower. There's a couple keywords there. Rinse and repeat. Rinse Hello. and repeat. Train to retain. It's a whole hashtag motto we have in the company. Train to retain, right? Bingo. Now, section four, you talk about the value of hearing no sometimes. What do you mean by that? A lot of salespeople are like, What? What do you mean by that? Yeah. Well, no takes on a number of different meanings. And I know people love to classify. No. Well, next opportunity. You know, okay. You can do here, here. First of all, no is only a moment in time. No is never permanent. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is when I hear no, mm. I'm going I'm to learn a couple things from it. A, if I'm in a low transaction item, in other words, a low value item and I hear no, fine. I'm moving on. Sure. But if I hear no, and it's a big value deal I'm working on, yeah. that just means no is a moment in time, and I'm going to figure out a different way to come back around. Yeah. But I always look at no as a signal to me, mm. as I've got to be doing something. Here's, here's what I find, and you have to understand the merits behind no. When the customer says no, is it because they've chosen to go somewhere else, or mm. they're just choosing to not make a decision? Our number one competitor is not the competitor down the street. Mm -hmm. Our number one competitor is the customer choosing to not make a decision. Yeah. That is it's, our number one competitor. That's our fault as salespeople because if we can't ask the right questions at the right time in that conversation to get that person to persuade themselves that they want to change their situation, that prospect stays in the status quo. Yeah. Nothing changes for them. Their problems don't get solved. They get worse. And it's up to you, the sales professional, to be able to communicate properly so they don't have to stay in that same status quo position. The current state, nothing ever changes. So you have to learn the right skills to be able to do that. And, and that's, one, that's one thing that, that I love about your, about your training because you know, I always hear this saying, and it's like my biggest pet peeve in selling, and people say, oh, buyers are liars. Okay, buyers are only lying to you because you don't know how to communicate to them. You don't know, you don't know what you don't know, right? You're using old school sales and closing techniques from the dinosaur ages of selling that trigger sales resistance in that person's mind that cause them to lie to you, that cause them to not open up to you. So when you learn skills like you're teaching that work with human behavior, people don't lie to you because they trust you. And so they open up to you. Your thoughts? Well, we attract the type of customer who we are. This is why I say you sell with integrity. When you sell with integrity, you will, you will attract customers who have integrity. When I hear the salesperson say, oh, man, I got crappy customers. Oh, wow, I got that. Guess what? You know what? I hate to say it, but probably you and your process are that. Your process is your sales skills are triggering that because they have problems that need to be solved. Now, let's talk about section four. You say in section four of the book, um, you don't close a sale, you begin a relationship. I love that way of thinking, right? Salespeople have to think that selling is being of service 
not manipulating people to buy something, right? What do you mean by that? And why is it so important for a salesperson in our day and age to really get that psychologically? Yeah, the only good sale is one that leads to the next sale. That's it. That is, that is it. If, yeah. if, if the sales you, this is what I, I love to ask companies and I love to ask people, how much of your business comes by way of referrals, comes yeah. by way of repeat? And if that's not on a trend line, long-term increasing year in and year out, and again, there can be wiggles and shakes, something's wrong. Something is fundamentally wrong. Now, here's what it is. When I treat you as not as a close, see, close is definitive. Well, I've closed you. It goes back to that whole bowling pin thing I was talking about at the beginning. I've knocked you down. I move on. You see, I want to open the relationship because there's going to be another opportunity. You see, every sale is a land and expand. Yeah. I've landed the sale and I'm going to expand. I may expand internally with you. I may expand externally with you. Yeah. But there's going to be additional opportunities yeah. that are going to arise yeah. I, if I treat I, this right. I can't agree with you more. You, you, as a sales professional, you have to do something that most salespeople just don't know how to do. And that's first, you have to detach yourself from the expectations of making a sale and instead really focus on whether there's a sale to be made in the first place. And when you come into that conversation that way, watch how your prospect opens up to you and communicates to you because you're more open to them, they become open to you. So I, hey, this was a great show. I, I can't thank you for being, uh, I can't thank you enough for being on here. Hunter, I love it, the, the sales hunter. Any final thoughts or advice for our listeners? Well, the final advice is this, is this sales is not about landing a sale. Sale is about creating an opportunity. And your objective each day is to influence yeah. and impact yeah. each person you come in contact with. And when you do that, you'll have earned the, the right, the privilege, honor, and respect to be able to meet with that person again. To me, yeah. that's what sales is. That's, that's a great day. Selling is all about. All right. So, Mark, tell us, uh, I want our listeners to really understand your training, get involved. Where can they learn more about you and your training so they can start learning these skills? The best place is the website, thesaleshunter.com. It's pretty easy, thesaleshunter.com. And of course, my new book, A Mind for Sales. And I'll tell you what, every day I get a note back. It's only, it hasn't even been out six months when we, we are now recording this. Yeah. And every day I'm still getting at least one note back from somebody that it has changed your life. It's impacted them. Uh, did I write it for COVID? No, I wrote it a year ago, but boy, the timing is just perfect. It's just perfect. All right. I can't thank you enough. Go to the saleshunter.com, opt in, get the book, invest in yourself. Companies are asking salespeople, how much sales training are you investing in each year outside of what your company's doing? And you've got to be able to have those skills if you really want great sales positions and really being able to communicate and sell properly right now in our, in our day and age, 100%. Mark, thanks for being on. Thank you. Great sell. Now, if you're serious about joining the top 1%, I mean the top 1%, and you want to experience more training content just like this, click the links right over there. Right over there, they're exactly what you need to see next. You see, I release new episodes featuring top salespeople and sales authorities, multiple six-figure, high six-figure, even seven-figure earners every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday every single week at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And if you're new here, do yourself a favor and smash that subscribe button right below, right below, and join our new Facebook group, Sales Revolution. You see, it's free, and there's a link in the description below just for you. We put it there for you. Finally, I make posts on Facebook and Instagram each and every day with more tips and training. So be sure and follow me and turn on your notifications. So make a comment in the first seven minutes to any of my latest posts, share this episode, and there's a very real chance that you're gonna win some killer prizes. And here's the thing, don't sit on the sidelines. Don't be like everyone else, get into the game. Join the sales revolution, stay active, get involved, learn the right skills, and we will show you how to take your life and income to a level that most only dream about. Stay safe. Talk to you soon.